Okay, folks, this is a um, example of how to fix your induction stove, your LG induction stove, when the bake element goes out. You'll find that the stove just does not heat up uh, as quickly as it did, and it will not get to a temperature too much past about 300 degrees. And so, here we go. Step one, you've got to get the stove out of its location without scratching the heck out of the floor. And to do that, uh, I have taken out this lower drawer. And, gee, just getting out the lower drawer, you've got to figure some things out. It turns out that right here in the lower drawer, perhaps you can see it, there's these releases. Um, you can see that there's a little tang here, right here. Uh, on this uh, on this plastic piece and you've got to release that out of the way so that you can pull the drawer out and the interesting part is you'll note that this is the left side of the drawer and you push the tang down to release it well you would think that you would do the same with both that you would you would think that you would uh, press the right side down as well but no uh, the right side's got to be pressed up at the same time the left side is pressed down and then you can slide the drawer out that was irksome I have no idea why they do that perhaps they're trying to produce only one plastic part to save money and so they put it on both sides and they don't care that uh, uh, that that uh, is non-intuitive they don't expect users to fix their own stuff okay i've put down a couple pieces of cardboard here and perhaps you can see i've sort of slid them under the front leg and the back legs it looks like a little bit of overkill to you i get that but um i've wrecked enough hardwood floors pulling appliances out without proper thought that i'm trying not to do that this time the idea here is it should all slide together and we're coming out, we're coming out, we're pulling, yeah, 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 we're almost there, okay, so where are we at? Okay, the stove is out enough that I can get my tiny hiney in here. Step one, safety first, safety first. This is a 50 amp circuit, safety first. Get the plug undone. And don't touch the elements. Be very careful. There we go, 50 amps. Now that won't kill me. Here's the gas feed to my former gas stove. I went from gas to induction. Eh, pluses and minuses on both. The uh, induction is fast, man, it is so fast. You can boil water like crazy, but the, uh, so quickly. But the, ga but the um, stove does make a little bit of noise. I will also say, you get used to it. So, I'm not sure, uh, but there's nothing wrong with this induction stove and boy does it have power. Okay, uh, getting the back off the stove is super simple. There's a set of screws, Phillips head number two. They're all about the same. And there's some down here. There's two of them down here. Uh, and around the side, there's a set of screws that you, there's one. Then there's this little ribbon at the top here. And all these screws are the same. I keep everything in a Ziploc bag. I'm a huge Ziploc bag fan. So, now this lifts up slightly, up and out. And I'll show you what's happening here. When you lift it up, what's happening is you're lifting it off these little hangers here. See this little hanger? That little hanger goes into a slot on the side right here so it's hanging on the little hanger you simply need to lift it out and note that there's a um, there's going to be a 
this. There's going to be a um, little thing here, strain relief thing that you've got to take out with one screw. Since I've had mine apart to um, uh, to uh, solve or uh, fix or find the problem, I've already taken this strain relief thing out, which fits into the slot, the rubber slot of the strain relief. You don't need to watch me do that. But. So getting the back off is super easy. Okay, I simply pulled the wire through enough that I could set this aside out of the way and that's that. So here's the interesting part and the thing that cost me two and a half hours of frustration in my life. I watched the other videos about how to fix the LG um, uh, bake burner, bake element, bake heater, and all of them said, oh yeah, it's a hidden element, and uh, it's right down here. There'll be a panel that you can take out, and the bake element is in here. Well, no. On this stove, the bake element, it, there is no panel. You can't get it out. So I puzzled and I puzzled. I went online. I looked at the um, all the different uh, parts, diagrams, and man, it was just driving me crazy. Okay, so when I went to try to figure out how to fix my oven, I went to YouTube, of course, and the first thing I found that seemed to make sense for me was this video from a source called Everyday Projects and uh, it was a great video and it talked about the hidden bake element and it explained a whole bunch about how that's done. So then I went to the LG parts site and put in the model of my stove which is an LSE 4616 ST. That's the convection oven, and um, I found the part that I was looking for by going to the interactive exploded view here, and that gives you this. And if you take a look at this diagram, the real confusion, for me at least, started with the fact that this element here, number 5513, looks like it's a bake element, and since it's below the cavity of the oven, right here, I got the idea that this might be a hidden element oven, and this would be what I needed. Turned out I was wrong. I was wrong because the diagram is very misleading. This is the element that serves as the bake element in this particular model of LG oven. This is actually the broiler, but by placing the broiler item down here under the oven cavity, it completely fooled me into thinking this was not the uh, broiler, which as you can see should be up here somewhere. I thought it was the bake element and that it was a hidden bake element. I was wrong. This stove does not have a bake element in the normal sense like this at the bottom of the stove at all, hidden or otherwise. The convection element is what serves as the bake element in the stove. So the only point of this is to say this diagram from LG is very confusing and um, it cost me a couple three hours of my time calling up the very nice people at LG Parts Canada and trying to figure out what part I needed. Um, I finally figured it out and we'll see how. Your secret weapon as a home repair genius is on the back of the stove there is an envelope and inside the envelope is this magical piece of information. It says tech sheet retained for service technician only and look what's in it. 
that sheet folds out and gives you a complete and totally comprehensive diagram of what's in the stove. Now here's my here's your first clue. Look at the components here. It tells you that there's a broil heater. Yeah, mine works fine. And there's a convection heater. There are no other heaters. This was the the point that started me saying, aha, I'm looking for a bake heater and I don't see one listed in their components. So, point of this whole video, there is no bake element in this model. The uh, convection coil works as your bake element. And the way it works is when you turn on bake, here, this one. When you turn on bake, the fan uh, inside the convection coil goes really slowly. And then when you turn on convection bake, it speeds up and goes really fast to give you that mix master effect to uh, equalize the temperature of all the air in the baking cavities. But will the convection heater coil stand up over time? I've only had this since it's 2021 July now, and I bought this in February 2019, so three years, and it it gave up. Two years, and it gave up. Two years and a couple months, thank you, honey. So what that means here is uh, this design may be good for LG in terms of saving money, but for the consumer, it might mean that this element goes much more frequently than it should. Okay, so uh, we're going to get our multimeter out here and we're going to test the continuity of the um, convection coil and the continuity of the uh, broil coil or heater element. Let's see what we get. So, my multimeter is pretty straightforward. I guess they all are. I know I'm not great at this. I learned this just from watching YouTube. I select the noise signal and I test the machine. Yep, I'm getting the noise. So when I test for continuity with the broil element, yes, I get the noise. It's, it's got continuity. But when I test for continuity on the convection element, hey, nothing, no noise. No continuity. It's busted. When I test the new one, uh, here's the new one, and I'm testing it, and I'm saying, yep, look at that. I got uh, 21.7. Okay, here's the inside of the stove and we're going to take out the four number two Phillips head screws which hold this plate covering the convection coil and uh, I'm sure for some people have fancy tools that make this easier but oh well so let me set these aside we can see the situation of a saying when you turn it on bake this fan goes fairly slowly enough so that it's spreading the heat of the coil out into the oven cavity and that gives you your bake function and when you hit when you turn it to convection this, of course, goes super fast to mix master the air in the, in the cavity here. But I repeat, there is no bake element hidden under this, um, under this bottom pan here. Getting it off, pretty simple. There's only two screws. Uh, again, they're all the same. They're saving money. It's a Phillips head number two in a punched hole and there's this Phillips head which holds the element in. There we go. Okay, 
So gently, gently, gently pull it out. And there it is. That's all there is to it. Question, why did this element fail? Because if you look at it carefully, and I have, there are no obvious burned out spots. So often when the element burns out, you'll see it burn right through on the outside and it looks puffy and burned. And However, what I have seen is that when this element was originally in there, right here, this bend, it was touching together. And I really wonder if the extraordinary heat of the two pieces touching together caused it to fail. So the question then is, is the new one better formed than the old one? And uh, I'm looking at it and saying, whatever factory this came from, the space between the elements is much more regular. The spacing bars are the same they've used, but this this was bent wrong on mine. Take a look. See the, the space here on this one is pretty good. And the space here, mine was actually physically touching. I bent it apart when I was uh, diddling with it. But I'm, I'm thinking that's one possible reason that it failed. Okay, we're back together again. And I am now plugged in back here. Now the back is off, so I'm being super, super careful because that's 50 amps open alive down there and that's just plain scary. So anyway, we're plugged in because I don't want to button things up until I test it. I've made that mistake so many times in the past. So here we go. We're going to turn it, oven control, we're going to turn it to bake and test to see whether the new element works or not. Here we go. Bake. Uh, set to 350, let's hit start. Okay, it's on bake, but the thing is, there's a, there's a dagger switch here that uh, uh, runs to make sure the door is closed. So I've turned the dagger, I, I'm, I'm holding in the dagger switch, so it thinks that the door is closed, and that's the speed that the fan goes when it's simply on bake. I know you can't see that, but that's not nearly as fast as when I put it to convection. Okay, here's the uh, magic. It has been just about 10 minutes exactly, and we have reached 350. So I don't know if 10 minutes is reasonable or not for oven to go from zero to 350, but I'm okay with that because the most we ever got out of it uh, when it was broken here in the last three days was 280. So. It's working, it's fixed, uh, and we can actually do a little bit of the paper towel test just because we want to. So, we'll turn that off. What's the paper towel test? The paper towel test, you, you will see, is towel. just to see. Yep, we're gonna, we're gonna use the paper towel test and say, oh yeah, holding it on here, and we get brown. Okay, so. Um, I'm surprised that the element doesn't get sort of red hot. It doesn't. Uh, perhaps the airflow from the fan um, solves the problem. But uh, the oven is properly heating up in 10 minutes to 350. Problem solved. And again, there is no hidden bake element under that pan in this product. Uh, my element, new element, cost me about $95 with tax included here in Canada. So if it's a hundred bucks every three, two and a half years to fix it, that's ridiculous. We'll see what happens.